اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد when his wife Sarah may peace be upon her felt for him being such a good man who always made dua Ya Allah grant me offspring who will be pure, who will serve your cause, offspring who will surrender to you just like I have. So his wife decided to give him the servant that she had had in marriage. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided then to bless Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam with a child, Ismail alayhi salam. So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a child, he was instructed after some time to take this wife of his and the child and to move on the earth until he got to a certain place which was completely barren. It had nothing on it. It was just soil and it was a very, very hot place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. And that is the valley of Makkah. When he got to Makkah to Mukarrama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, leave this woman and the child and go and he started walking. He was breastfed for a while and then the food ran out and everything dried up, subhanallah. And the mother is looking at the child and she says, no, I must make an effort to try and look for some food. So she decided to go up the hillock, the Mount Safa. She went up the mountain and she's looking. Is there any sign? No sign, no life, no movement, no nothing. So she came down making dua to Allah. And when she gets to the bottom, she's running. Why is she running at the bottom? Because she wants to get to the top of the other mount on the other side. And she doesn't want to miss anyone who might pass while she's at the bottom. So she runs at a specific place and then she climbs up. She is in Marwa. She makes dua again for sustenance. Ya Allah, send us some goodness. Ya Allah, you are the one. We know you will not let us down. And a couple of times she ran up and down. And down and up. Allahu Akbar making dua, looking, checking. Then she heard a sound and she's looking. What sound is this? And she came down and she looked at where the child was and there was a spring of water gushing from nowhere. Subhanallah. A spring of water gushing from nowhere. She looked at it and she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She sat down and she wanted to gather the water. So she created a basin-like structure, small little basin-like structure with her hands, with the muddy sand, clay that now became like clay and mud because it was wet. And she began to say in the language, Zam, 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 Zam. It means stop, 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 because we want to now take you and drink you. So you stop. To this day, we have this water known as Zam, Zam from the same well. After some time, the birds began to come. When the birds began to come and they were drinking from there in the middle of the desert, the middle of the desert, no life was there. And caravans used to pass. And you know, in the heat of the moment, they're looking for birds. Why are they looking for birds? Not to hunt the birds, but wherever you see a bird, you know, there's some water nearby. So the clan of Jorhum was passing from that area. And they noticed some birds in the middle of nowhere. They were not expecting them. So they decided to check up on what is happening. And they sent someone, go and see where these birds are flying to. So the birds had gone and they were sitting around this well and the water was gushing. They were drinking and this messenger finds a woman with a little baby. So he went back to his people, the people of Jorhum, the caravan, and he explained to them. They were very, very amazed. They came, they knew this is a miracle. So they asked the woman, do you mind if we live here? Why? Because there's water running from here. It's gushing. That doesn't happen in, the, in, the, in, in that particular desert. Doesn't happen. Water gushing from underneath. From that she realized these people have good character. They are disciplined people. They are cultured. So she said, look, you can come and stay here on condition that this water belongs to us, not to you. We'll allow you to drink from it, but it's our property, not yours. So you can drink and benefit. 
they, they stayed there, they were very happy and they loved the little child. They loved the child. And as the child grew, they taught him Arabic. They were pure Arabs. They taught him Arabic, they taught him manners and so on. And as he grew up, his father used to come and go. His father, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he came back at one stage, he'd seen, mashallah, this is the setup. And he was quite happy with it. And he used to come and he used to go. And thereafter, one day, as Ibrahim alayhi salam came into Mecca and he was lying down, he had a dream. Where Ibrahim alayhi salam, one night he will see himself slaughtering his own son Ismail. And now Ibrahim alayhi salam is in a great test. He's in a very, very tough position. Slaughter your son. Slaughter your son. Maybe we think about it. It's easy, but think about it happening to you. You realize it's very hard. Slaughter your own son. Could you imagine when you slaughter your own son? But what was the response of Ibrahim alayhi salam? He had no other option except saying, Sam'an wa ta'an. Oh Allah, we heard and we obey. Regardless to what you order me. If it's to slaughter my son, then your order must be implemented. And he related the dream to his son the following day. He took his son aside and he tells his son, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. When his son was old enough and he used to walk with him and he used to travel with him and come back with him and so on, he told his son, he says, Oh my son, I have been instructed in a dream by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sacrifice you. So what do you think I should do? قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ Oh my father, do as Allah has commanded you. Do as Allah has commanded you. You will find me from amongst those who are patient. Immediately he surrendered. It did not take him a split second to think. SubhanAllah, this is... This is the Prophet. This is, this is someone who fears Allah. This is someone whose love is for Allah, who lives for Allah, who will die for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Father, do what Allah had ordered you. If Allah had ordered you to slaughter me, then do so. Insha'Allah, by the will of Allah, you will find me from those who have patience. This is the true heart of someone who loves Allah and obeys Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibrahim will take his son. He goes and looks for a good place to slaughter his son away from his mother. At that moment, Iblis will come trying to turn Ibrahim away from what he saw. And he came up to Ibrahim and he told him, Oh Ibrahim, you're going to take his, you're going to go and slaughter your son? You just saw a dream. Maybe it was just a dream, a foolish dream. So Ibrahim grabbed stones and threw him, stoned him. Then he went to Ismail. Trying to turn Ismail away from following his father. And Ismail also started to cast him with rocks and stones. And then he came to both of them. And three of them started to cast him with rocks and stones. And that's why when you go to Hajj, you throw those three different throwers. Reminding yourself when you attempt to do something for Allah, be firm and strong. And then they come to a big rock. Surubu to put Ismail, to lay Ismail on it and to slaughter him. Subhanallah, ya ikhwani. Look what Ismail tells his father at that time. He tells him, Oh Father, make my face towards the ground. So when you look at me, make my face towards the ground. So in case, if you look at my face, and you see my face while you're slaughtering, you might get some sympathy. You walk away from Allah's order. So turn my face around. And sharpen your knife so you could slaughter me quickly. And you continue with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he turned Ibrahim, Ibrahim turned Ismail on his forehead towards the ground.
فلما أسلما وتله للجبين. Allah says the two of them surrendered to the instruction. Isma Ibrahim alayhi salam grabs his son. His face is towards the ground. The knife is sharpened in his hand. He puts it on the neck of Ismail alayhi salam and he tries to slaughter. And every time he tries to slaughter, the knife will spin the other side. And again he tries to slaughter and the knife will spin the other side. Because the knife will cut Ali by the will of Allah as the fire will Ali burn by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ Firstly Allah says, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَنْ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمٌ قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤِيَا Allahu Akbar We replaced him with a ram from paradise and Ibrahim alayhi salam slaughtered and sacrificed that ram from paradise and he looked and he'd seen this is a ram and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called out oh Ibrahim you are indeed truthful to us we have tested you and you have passed the test now you can ask what you want it's all yours Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar this was the ultimate test and the, the, the passing of the test was not only for the father but even for the child. Now there are people of the previous scriptures who say that the sacrifice was Ishaq or Isaac and it was not Ismail. Ishaq was not even born at the time. He was not yet there at the time. And this happened in Makkah al-Mukarramah. So there is no point to dispute that. Historically, it is proven through history that Ishaq alayhi salatu was was not there. Because after that, Allah says in the Quran, once Allah called out to him and told him that we have replaced this with a sacrificial ram from Jannah, then Allah says, and we gave him good news of another child known as Ishaq who will come to him. So this was another child. Indeed, this is a very, very clear manifest test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the days went past, and then another order comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build a house as a symbol of the oneness of Allah Almighty. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will go to the valley of Mecca. And he'll see Ismail alayhi salam. And he'll say to Ismail, O oh son, Allah had ordered me an order. So Ismail would say, Oh Allah, or oh, oh, oh Dad, do what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered you to do. So Ibrahim told Ismail, And would you help me? So Ismail said, Yes, I will help you. They were making a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As they were doing this, what was the dua? Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. O oh Allah, accept this from us. O oh Allah, we are putting up a house for you. So as they began to build it, it got a little bit high. When it was a little bit high, what happened? Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was getting the bricks or the rocks from Ismail alayhi salam. There was no mortar used, no cement. It was just rock on rock on rock on rock. Each one was fitting into the other like a jigsaw. Similar to what we spoke about when Nuh built the ark. Noah, may peace be upon him. So what happened? As they're putting it up, now it's getting a bit high. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously caused a specific rock that he was standing on to go slightly higher. And he placed it. Then it would come slightly lower. He would get the, the, uh, the next one. Then it would go slightly higher. He would place it. And it would come low. They knew that this is Allah. It is the house of Allah. He has shown us one too many times that definitely He is with us. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the house was built, there was a corner. Ibrahim alayhi salam thought to himself, I want to put a proper rock in this corner that fits flush in the corner and he was trying to look for a, a rock and asking Ismail alayhi salam let's put this rock and Ismail alayhi salam is looking for something but he couldn't find it and later on Ismail alayhi salam came back and he'd seen a beautiful rock there he says what's this he says Allah sent me a rock from Jannah from paradise this rock has come and this is what we call today Al-Hajar Al-Aswad 
white and it became black from the sins of people. And now it's black. And if you see it, it's a black rock. And it's not as big as it used to be. Throughout years, we reduced a few tips here and there, fell down and was stolen in some areas. So it's smaller than the original size. Now, let's go a little bit further. When Ismail alayhi salam had married and he was in Mecca and we had mentioned that his father Ibrahim alayhi salam used to come and go. He used to be between the Arabian Peninsula, between Mecca and Asham. Asham meaning where Palestine is today. So he came into Mecca. Nobody knew who he was. And he entered the house. He knocked on the door of Ismail alayhi salam to go and meet his son, obviously. Lo and behold, there was a woman who answered the door. He looked at her and he asked her a few questions. He greeted her. She responded and he asked her, how is your condition? Where is your husband and what is he doing? And she complained one way to this man. Firstly, she didn't know who he was. Secondly, she began to complain. No, he leaves us here. He goes away and he, we don't really have much. You know, we're struggling and so on. There's hardly food and what have you. When Ibrahim alayhi salam heard this woman, he was upset. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looks at the woman and says, Tell him that there was a man who had come and he is saying salam upon him and he asks him to change his doorstep, the threshold of his door. Tell him, look, this threshold, he needs to change it. So she said, no problem. And he was gone. Before she could ask him, who are you? He was gone. Now Ismail alayhi salam came. As he entered, he sensed that his father was here. He sensed it. So Ismail alayhi salam asked his wife, was somebody here? She said, oh yes, the man came. Who was he? I don't know who he was, but he was, you know, an, an elderly man. And she described a little bit of a description. So he asked the question, did he have any message? Yes, he passed you salams. And he said that you need to change the threshold of your door. Immediately he looked at her and said, that was my father instructing me to divorce you. You are the threshold. You're the one who answered the door when, he was, when I wasn't here. And he's telling me, I need to divorce you. And he told her, please go back home. Now, where was she from? She was from Mecca. She was from the tribe of Jurhum. And Jurhum, they brought Ismail up. And they got him married. They loved him to bits. They got him married to one of them. And Jurhum accepted her and told him, don't worry, we get you married to another. They were so happy. They knew that if this man says something, there has to be some reason behind it. And so did Ismail alayhi salam. He did not just follow his father for no reason. He knew that this is my father. He is a saint. He is a Nabi. And if a Nabi instructs me, there is nothing I can do. There you are. So he, Ibrahim alayhi salam went away and time continued. This man was married again to another woman from the same tribe and he lived. After some time, Ibrahim alayhi salam came back. Exactly the same thing. He knocked the door. The door was opened. He asked this woman after greeting her that, you know, how is your condition? What is happening here? And so on. And she said, no, Alhamdulillah. She didn't talk excessive talking with him. Alhamdulillah. We praise Allah on all conditions. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looked at this woman and he tells her, give him my regards, pass him my salam and tell him he should maintain the threshold. He should maintain the doorstep. Allahu Akbar. So when Ismail alayhi salam came back, he felt that his father was there. He asked, what did anyone visit? She said, yes. She described the man. But this time when he asked, what did he say? She said, well, he said, I should give you salam and you should maintain your threshold, meaning the doorstep, keep it. So he said, that was my father telling me to keep you as a wife. You're a good woman. Alhamdulillah. And then civilization and settlement started to take place in the valley of Mecca. And Ismail alayhi salam, his father is Ibrahim. Ibrahim is not an Arab. And this is where the Arab come in. Arab, the Arab and the original Arabs, they come from Yemen. The original Arabs, they come from Yemen. Now, when the Yemen tribe Jurhum mixed with Ismail and Ismail mixed with them, Ismail grew among the tribe of Jurhum and he spoke the tongue that Jurhum speaks and that's the Arabic language. And not only Ismail learned the Arabic language from them, but he became 
so eloquent in the Arabic language. He became a scholar in the Arabic language. He became one of the best among them in the Arabic language. And Ismail alayhi salam got married from the tribe of Jurhum. And then descendants and offspring uh, came and took place in the uh, valley of Mecca from Ismail alayhi salam. And from the offspring, Quraysh comes. And from Quraysh, Hashem comes. And from Hashem, Abdul Muttalib. And Abdul Muttalib is the grandfather of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the Prophet sallallahu descendants, where does it go back to? It goes back to Ismail. And who's Ismail? Is the son of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim is the grandfather of all prophets and messengers. Going back to the point how Ismail originally is non-Arab, but married to Arabs, lived among them, and they had offsprings with them. And that's why the Yemenis, the Arab, before Ismail, they call them Al-Arab Al-Ariba. They call them the original Arabs. The Arabs that came after Ismail, they call them Al-Arab Al-Musta'riba. In other words, imitation Arab, if you want to call it. Al-Arab Al-Musta'riba is those who are not originally Arab, but they came in and fitted in to be Arab. And from among them is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and most of the Arab these days. So they're all Arab Musta'riba. And this gives you a brief history where the Arab come from. Among the most important characteristics of Ismail Alayhi Salam is what Allah talks about him in the Quran. And this is the, we, we should emulate what, what I'm about to recite because we all are probably lacking in this particular characteristic. Allah says in the Quran, And mention in the book, Ismail. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيًّا He was always truthful to his promises. He was always truthful when he made a promise. He'd fulfill his promises if he promised someone. What else? He used to command, not just advise, but command his family, his wife, and his children to pray their prayers, the salat, and to pay their zakat. And on top of that, he was pleasing to his Lord. It is narrated that Ismail alayhi salam once promised a particular person to meet him at Asr time at a particular place. It says he went there and he waited for the man and he would not leave his spot the man forgot that he had an appointment with Ismail salam, but he told him, have an appointment with me. And Ismail salam waited from Asr until Maghrib. So about three hours or more, four hours. He waited for him because he used to fulfill his promise. The man then came in the end and he apologized. In Mecca, he lived all his life there and he passed away in Mecca and he was buried in Mecca. Until we meet again, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.